Red 5 Comics. Who are they? Why should you know about them? That's what we're here to discuss today. Let's get into it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Before we jump on into everything, if at any point you like or see what you hear in the video, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you know anytime we upload a new video. Also be sure to hit that like button. That really helps us out with the YouTube algorithm gods. I know it's the same spiel that everybody gives you, but hey, it helps us out. So with that said, let's jump right into what we're here to talk about today. So who are Red 5 Comics? Well, to put it short, they're awesome. But uh, the reason why I felt that they were important, at least for me, is they're actually a local indie publisher here to where we are in Texas, <clears throat> and we've had the pleasure of meeting, or actually, I, yeah, well, all of us have had the pleasure of meeting Joshua Starnes, who's one of the higher-ups there at Red 5. In fact, I want to say Josh was at the very first free comic book day that I ever attended at my local uh, comic shop. Met him, he was super cool, I believe he, I've got several autographed uh books from him so just a really cool company with a very diverse portfolio of comics and just good people so I wanted to share and spread the love and and try to let you guys know about what they have to offer so I've got seven different uh, comics here to talk about they do have obviously quite a bit more than that but I figured this was a good enough diverse selection to try and hit a few things that maybe everybody would be interested there's a little horror there's some sci-fi fantasy you know <clears throat> you name it there's there's some really cool stories in here one of them which actually this very first one i'm here to talk about has actually come from a netflix show and that comic is called kulapari yeah so I've, i figured i'd start here because this might be the most recognizable name of all their comics simply because of that netflix show um it is written by Trevor Price and Joshua Starnes, and then the art is done by Sonia Lau. As I understand, because it has been a good while since I've watched Kulapari, um, this series is actually a, a direct uh, follow-up to the show itself, so this should be a pretty linear timeline for anybody who's watched the show, or you can watch the show and read the comics, or you can just read the comic itself, because it is actually very, very good. But I've got the synopsis down here so that I can kind of tell you about it. I'm going to do it for every comic so you've got an idea at least of what you're getting into. Um, so this one is uh, Mernu, the leader of the Poison Frogs, the protectors of the Outback, has been sent on a secret mission to find the original source of the frog's power and bring it to their new homeland. Sounds simple enough to me. It is a really good story and if you're one of those you like big fantastical worlds anthropomorphic type animals that you know speak and everything this is definitely something that you'll be interested in and I definitely recommend checking it out um, I will definitely say that uh, it is very art wise it is very colorful which kind of fits when you think about poison frogs and this and that they themselves in real life are actually quite colorful looking, so I, I, I dug what they did with the world in this one, and how they drew it, and how they colored it and everything. Alright, so this next one is actually one that I've done a review on, at least the first volume, here on the channel, and it's called Drone. So, this is kind of your sci-fi slash serious and comedy, you know, dark humor kind of thing. Um, but there are actually two volumes to this story. I have volume two here i haven't read it yet i was finally able to get uh, a copy for myself was lucky josh actually happened to be on a live sale one night um and they had for all four issues of the second one so i grabbed it because i've been waiting waiting to read it after i got to read the first one um so i'm going to give you this the uh the solicitation for volume two because if you want to know about volume one i will link the video down in our uh, video description here so that you can check it out if you're interested in that but in volume two it starts like this so after being drafted into the military's drone program david weaver discovers that it isn't quite the video game he thought it was but when the drones are called to investigate a sunken submarine he finds himself on the front lines of a conflict that could start world war three 
and then this was featured in Free Comic Book Day of 2015. So this series has been around for a little while. Um, for me, one of the things that I I dug about this is, uh, again, Red Five being local to us, this comic had some very local references. So it 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 made the comic more, I guess. Uh, I'm not accessible is not the word, but uh, it resonated more with me just because of that familiarity. There's a couple of comics out that that are like that, but yeah, I loved the very first volume. I can't wait to read this one. It's just the idea of it is cool. It's it's computer hackers. They got bored one day and hacked into the military's drone program kind of unknowingly and they and in the first volume they basically witnessed somebody get murdered and they took over the drones to save their lives that's kind of the gist of how the first thing goes and then a whole bunch of other chaos but that's how david i believe he's one of the main characters from the first one gets drafted into the military he just goes into to be the drone pro in the drone program so it's it's a very cool story like i said it's got ups downs humor it gets dark, it, you know, it hits a lot of emotional spectrums, and I and I really enjoyed that part of the story. Not to mention, of course, uh, art-wise, it was amazing. The art was done by Randy Kintz, um, and this was written by Scott Chitwood, who is a name that I see fairly often throughout uh, Red Five's um, <clears throat> catalog. He's done, he's definitely written several things for them, so um, I can honestly say that I am a fan of his because of that, because... I kind of was paying attention to names, and I'm like, oh, okay, so he wrote this, he wrote this, he wrote this. I'm really bad about following that kind of thing, like who wrote this book that I liked, what other books did they write that I liked, or what other books did they have. I'm super bad about that kind of thing, which is why it's hard for me sometimes to pick favorite writers and artists because of how bad I am at that. Sorry, a little sidebar, but yeah. <clears throat> um... So definitely check this one out if, if you want something that hits on all fronts with a sci-fi twist. Alright, this next one, I had to have a zombie book in here. Had to, because everybody loves zombies. They might be a little overdone in pop culture, but nonetheless, everybody does love zombies. So this is called ZMD, or Zombies of Mass Destruction. Um, yeah, this has a twist though and I think that's one of the reasons why I picked this one it's not your typical zombie story in some ways and so yeah I, I liked it for the slight differences that there are so this is written by Kevin Graveau I hope I pronounced that correctly and art by Geraldo Borges or Borges again if any of these names are uh, butchered, I do apologize. I'm, <laughs> I'm just kind of doing a dry reading here but let me know if you do happen to see this in the comments excuse me, how to actually pronounce the names correctly. It's a pretty, like I said, it's, it's got a little bit of a twist, so let me see what you think of this. <clears throat> uh, the solicitation is, with public patience for Middle East casualties wearing thin, the U.S. military adopts a new weapon, zombies. Airdropped into hot zones, the walking dead indiscriminately affect, infect everyone engineered to dissolve at daybreak. They create a safe combatant-free zone. What could go wrong? As you can imagine, a lot goes wrong. I will add that apparently uh, Kevin Graveau is a creator of the Underworld movie franchise, or or at least somebody involved with the book is, so I thought that was cool. And that probably explains why the concept works so well. This is a very, very good series. If you want something slightly different to your zombie story, this is it. This is actually zombies used in a way that I honestly never in my head would have thought to use. And I think that's, again, that's why I enjoyed it so much. That's why everybody here enjoyed it so much. So definitely check out this one for zombies with a different twist. Sorry, that's a bit redundant and repetitive. All right. So moving along, this next one, <clears throat> the general plot may sound kind of similar, but trust me when I say that the book is a lot more than that. Um, this book is called The Rift. Now, what's cool about this book it, it is that it's uh, presented by Jeremy Renner. Um, I believe that he, for a little while, was going to do some stuff where he was going to have a company write comics and whatnot. So this is actually a very cool thing that he was involved with this. I got this trade. I just happened to be at my LCS. They have a, a good red size Red 5 section with most of their trades out. 
And I saw this and I was like, you yeah, well, what is what is this about? Because it's got, you know, you'll see on the cover here that I put up, um, you know, it's a simple, effective cover. And I'm like, what is this about? So let me tell you. It's the riff tells the story of a single mother and her son whose lives changed forever after witnessing a World War II fighter pilot from 1941 crash land in present day Kansas. They find themselves drawn into the work of Section 47, a secret government organization responsible for responding to rifts that open in space and time. This is written by Dave Hanfield and Richard Rayner and art done by Leno Corvelio. Again, if I got this wrong, please let me know in the pronunciations. I just thought that was a super cool thing. I, I kind of flipped through it. It, it looked good art-wise. But I read that, that uh, synopsis and I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy it. And, you know, at that point I had written, written, read about three or four different things from Red 5. So I was like, all right, these guys are one of those. They'll, they'll earn my money just to check something out. So I, I got it and it's really, really good. The reference I made to it, it sounds kind of similar as if Captain America, but except he gets frozen. But this is a rift in space that comes through. And I thought it was a very cool kind of secret, small, very small, slight sci-fi twist with the space-time thing and whatnot. It, it's a very, very good book. You should definitely, definitely check it out. So the next one on my list might be one of the more, it's actually, it's not might be, it is one of the more recent books from Red 5 and it's written by Joshua Starnes himself and art by Raymond Estrada. This book is called The Box. Uh, this one is about uh, a detective Leo Bloom. His partner is a box, a magic box from which he can take whatever he can imagine some of the time. But when he's framed for the kidnapping of a prominent scholar, Leo suspects a plot to take his prized possession from him. Can he find out before either the police or the mafia find him? I realize I, I phrased that bad when I read that a little bit, but hopefully it made sense to you. Um, if not, I do apologize. Uh, anyways, so I, I haven't finished the series yet. I got through issues one and two. I've got three and four laying around. It was, it was hard for me to keep up with it because I just... Like everybody, I got a little buried and I got very bad about keeping up with some of my newer comics. But the two, the first two issues were really good. And the interesting thing about the box is, if I remember right, he has to, I think, either give it away or, or something. But it can't just be taken from him and used by other people, if I remember right. I can't remember what it is. But, like it says, it's some of the time it will do things for him, some of the time it'll not necessarily give him what he wants but it's interesting to see how he uses it to figure certain things out and it's it's a very kind of dark uh gloomy kind of story but you know it, it's it's actually very cool it's like a little bit of a what's a crime drama with a supernatural twist to it basically is is the best way to describe it so yeah all right so this next one i have not personally read at all but this one comes very highly recommended from Jenna, so I thought I'd put it on the list. Um, this one is called Bjorn. This one is definitely a very lighthearted, it's a very fun, big adventure story. Um, if you are a fan of Kanto, I think this is something that you will like um, quite a bit. So uh, it is written and drawn by Ben Bender. So the man, and he's a very, very cool dude. I remember uh, seeing him get interviewed by Jenna, actually. And they talked about the book, and she went out and got the entire series after this, and she has not stopped raving about it since. And I want to say this was about a year ago. So that should give you an idea. Um, but this, the story goes as follows. Bjorn's world is big, full of living myths and fairy tales, but that won't stop the littlest Viking from living a legendary life. After Bjorn finds his way to an uncharted island, he wastes no time launching headfirst on his quest for adventure, or at the very least, his quest to find a sandwich. <laughs> what perils await young Bjorn in this new land, and will the littlest Viking be big enough to rise above the dangers coming his way? It's a very, very apt description. I've, I've merely flipped through a couple of the issues, and like I said, if you are a fan of Kanto, this is definitely something more in your lane. 
you will really, really enjoy this. Uh, ben did an amazing job illustrating this world, and like it says, little character, and it is big time adventures from what Jenna says. I really, really want to try to get her to do a review of this here soon so that you guys can get more in depth. But, like I said, we'll link you to Red Five's uh, shop down here in the video description so that you can check it out. Hopefully, just hearing that part of it, uh, the story itself is enough to sell me. So if, if uh, I had just heard that and read that cold, I would definitely buy it myself. So hopefully that's enough to convince you guys. Alright, so last but certainly not least on my list um, is a book called Mega. This is definitely the most recent one in my mind because they just started Volume 2 back in, I believe, November or December. The whole book is written and illustrated by Salvador Sands. This, for sure, to me, in my opinion at least, is the most gorgeous book art-wise that is in Red Five's entire catalog. It's also just one of the most beautiful looking books I've seen, period. Salvador's art is stunning. And as you can see by the cover, it, it's got something. And I'm not going to lie, what you see on the cover is exactly what you get inside. And when I first opened the book and saw that, I was hooked. And the story is very good. It, this is very much if you're a big Godzilla, Kong, mon big monster type fan like that, this is your series. So with that said, what is this one about? Uh... A gigantic creature has been awakened from its eternal sleep in Antarctica. The destructive monster, only known as the Salamander, has started a journey of chaos and destruction. The only thing that could stop this menace is another sleeping giant, a creature from under the ocean known as Mega. Like I said, if Godzilla and Kong are your thing, this will be your thing. This book is so good in so many ways. The story... And just visually, my God, I, you're going to see me harp on that, but please, please, if you ever see this on a rack at your local LCS, check it out. Or just Google search some images of the book if you can find any, and you'll see what I mean. Um, I honestly wish I had the book here in front of me so that I could just open and show you the pages, but yeah. I, again... It was a lot of fun. I, I will admit that I myself, I do like Godzilla, but I'm not the biggest fan in the world. Um, but I picked this up anyway, like I said, because of the visuals. And it's actually, it's really, really good. So it's it's got me to open my mind a little more to go check out some more Godzilla and Kong type stuff. Um, admittedly, I've not really watched any of the newer movies. Um, <clears throat> but I'm going to now because of this. You know, just to kind of get into that genre a little more because... I, I kind of been taking the approach of, okay, giant monsters, well, I used to like giant zors that look like monsters or dinosaurs, you know, with Power Rangers, so why not? The only difference is it's not little people piling them. <laughs> um, but yeah, so those are seven of very many suggestions from the Red 5 catalog. Um, just wanted to kind of give you some, you know, somewhere to start a starting point and hopefully you'll you'll see that they do have quite the variety and they're an awesome company that deserves all the support and love from the comic community because they are very very good people um like i said i've, I've had the pleasure to meet josh starnes a couple of times uh, like i said i've got several books that are signed by him just he's a really really great person with a great mind he's got a very creative mind and i can see why he has <clears throat> done so well with red five um yeah but that's all i've got for you guys today um again let me know uh if you've read anything from red five put it down in the comments i'd love to hear some of your favorites or if anything i've said here sounds like something that you'd want to go read again let me know in the comments and i'll be happy to talk to you guys once you do read it and share thoughts back and forth that's all I've got. So as always, please stay safe, stay healthy. I will catch you guys next time. Later, everyone.